So the title of my study is uh, the role of 532 nanometers of special micropulse laser in central serous coreotinopathy, which is non-resolving, with soft fovea leak on FFA. So we have a lot of studies on uh, subthreshold micropulse laser being used in CSCR, but if you see, most of these studies are using 810 nanometers diode laser, and a few studies using 577 nanometers yellow laser. We found only one study which is specifically targeted on CSCR having sub-fovea leaks on FFA. And this study has used 577 nanometers yellow laser. Now another option in these cases would be doing a PDT, which is an expensive option for the patient. So with this background in mind, we went ahead with the aim of studying the role of 532 nanometers subthreshold micropulse laser in non-resolving CSCR having a sub-fovea leak on FFA. It was a prospective interventional study in which we included patients more than 18 years of age, symptomatic for at least three months of duration, having subfluvial fluid on OCT and having a focal subfluvial leak on FFA. We excluded all the patients who had chronic CSCR in the form of RPE changes, patients with the past history of treatment for CSCR, having multiple leaks on FFA, patients having other vitreoretinal disorders currently or in the past. We also excluded patients who had undergone any intraocular procedure in the past six months, who were currently or in the past on steroid therapy, who had an opaque media to compromise the quality of imaging, and patients having a high refractive error. So what we did is we used a 5% we used quantal medical laser, uh, 532 nanometers with a duty cycle of 5%, and at uh, pulse duration of 200 milliseconds. So gave a test burn of 100 microns outside the vascular arcades using this to titrate the threshold power. And we used a grid of five by five confluent laser spots with no spacing, with zero spacing. We used 20% of the threshold power to give the burns. So we targeted this grid of laser spots on the area of the focal leaf, leak which was suffovial in all these cases. As you can see, in this, this is just a schematic diagram. So the outcome measures the primary outcome measures were the change in the visual equity, the change in contrast sensitivity. The secondary out outcome measures were resolution of the neurosensory defect uh, detachment and to find any adverse effects of the laser. All the AIs which showed no increase, uh, which showed no change in the height of NSD or showed an increase in the height of NSD were subjected to a rescue laser with the same settings as in the primary treatment. So this is one prototype case. 35 years old male with a vision of 618. This is the sub-fovea leak we see, which we see on FFA. We did laser. This is the pre-op, uh, pre-laser OCT. This is one month post OCT. We don't see any changes uh, on OCT at the level of RP or ISOS junction. This is the autofluorescence before laser. This is the autofluorescence. We can see the RP changes which are pre-existing before laser was done, and the autofluorescence six months later with again no changes. So we had 23 eyes of 21 males whom we treated with a mean age of 37.09 years and a test duration uh, with a, a symptom duration of, it, of uh, mean duration of 4.48 months and the laser part, uh, power which we used was in the range of 140 to 240 milliwatts. This is the trend in the improvement in visual acuity we see. There was a significant improvement at every visit, at one month, three months and at six months. There was an improvement in contrast sensitivity, again, which was statistically significant. This was measured only at the end of six months after the laser. We can see that there was a continuous resolution of neurosensory detachment, and you can see the curve is steepest in the initial first month, when the maximum effect was seen after doing the subthreshold micropulse laser, and the corresponding improvement in the central macular thickness also. So when we see the number of eyes which had a complete resolution of subretinal fluid, it was 9 out of 23 eyes at 1 month, improving to 12 at 3 months, and 16 out of 23 at 6 months. So if I show you the data set of individual eyes, two of the eyes did not show any response to subthreshold micropulse laser at the end of 3 months, and so they were subjected to rescue laser. But these eyes again continued to have a persistent fluid, so they were ultimately at the end of 6 months subjected to photodynamic therapy. There were another two eyes who initially showed a good response so we did not give them rescue laser, but at the end of six months, they had persistent fluid. So at the end of six months, they were subjected to, again, repeat laser. Uh, these four eyes are still under follow-up. 
as far as the safety concerns go, no laser spots was visualized at the end of six months by biomicroscopy or an OCT or an autofluorescence. None of the patients had any complaints like a positive scotoma or any other complaint related to the procedure. So to conclude, 532 nanometers subthreshold micropulse laser is safe and effective treatment for persistent CSE with sufferable leak on FFA. There may be a need to repeat the micropulse laser in cases who do not respond in the first sitting. But definitely, since the number of eyes in our situation is... Uh, a little less, it's 23, but then the cases with sulfovial leak is not very common. So, uh, we have a follow-up which is still being carried on, so maybe a longer follow-up would give us a def more definite conclusion from our study. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So one or two quick points. Sir. Uh,